I looked, and there was a great multitude, numbering greater than the stars in the heaven. People from every nation, every tribe, every culture, every language. And they were standing before the king. They were all robed in white, and they were holding palm branches up high in the air and shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! And with them all the choirs of angels, the hosts of heaven, were all singing together, Blessing and glory and honor and might and wisdom and power and riches be to God forever and ever, forever and ever and ever. Amen. And it was joyous. And glory was just shining everywhere. And the king's eyes flashed with fire. And on his head he wore a sacred crown. And I looked down, I looked away because it was just too wonderful, too spectacular for my eyes. But a loud voice from the throne cried out, saying, Behold, look now, God's dwelling place is with humans. He will live with them and they will be His peoples. God Himself will be with them. So I looked again. I looked. And there was the king. But he was lying in a hospital bed. And beside him was another person. And their hands were pierced with plastic tubes and their sides stabbed with wires. Their heads crowned with bandages. Suddenly a swell, a chorus of clanging the machines arrayed all around, sounding the alarm. Death is near. The companion looked with dimming eyes into the face of the king as they lay beside each other, quickly dying. Behold, the king whispered, look now, for God's dwelling place is with mortals. He will be their God. And they will be his people. And as one, they exhaled their last breath. I stood there feeling numb. And I looked at my shoes. When I looked up, there was the king. Standing amongst black plastic bags reeking of rotten food. And there was another there, too, dressed just like the king both of them crowned with dirty, black, knitted caps. The king's companion was rummaging through the refuge, selecting gobs of food and putting them in a stained plastic container. And he found a stale loaf of bread and held it up above his head and said, Aha! with triumph. And he went and sat with the king and spread out the feast. And the king took the bread and broke it and he gave it to us, saying... Take and eat this. I took the morsel, and as I did, the king said, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with his people. He will be their God, and God himself will be with them. And I looked at that hunk of bread. When I looked up, there was the king again, being pushed and shoved and kicked along with two of his brothers in front of a mob bearing torches and clothed in terrible and sinister white against the blackness of the night. And all three of them together wore crowns of cuts and bruises from the blows that the mob had rained down upon their heads. They halted under the bough of a mighty tree. The mob tied nooses around the king's neck along with his brothers, hurling insults at them all. And then they hung them from the tree, the king in the middle with one on his left and one on his right, his brothers. And as he gasped with one last breath, the king choked out, Behold! The dwelling place of God is with His people. 
God will be with them. I looked away into the darkness and I closed my eyes. I opened my eyes and they stung. They stung from the poisonous smoke billowing from giant chimneys and the gray ashes that fell like cursed snow. And I saw the king crowned now only with the stubble of a shaven head and robed in black and white striped pants and shirt. And he stood there with his brothers in a line, all of them clothed the same, all with pale faces looking down. And stony-faced officers carrying black guns yelled and pushed the king with his companions into a room like a shower and locked them all in. But instead of water, gas filled the room. And one by one the men fell around him, and the king himself went to his knees, chest heaving. Yet he looked up into the eyes of his captors and said, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with humans. He will be their God, and He will dwell among them. My eyes clouded, and I saw nothing. I would not open my eyes again. I would not, unless to see the king as he once was in his glory, radiant, lifted up high, exalted. But a voice cried out, look now, look, look now and see the king lifted up in all his glory. And so I opened my eyes and I saw soldiers put a purple robe on the king. But then they twisted thorns together to make a crown and they placed it on his head. They began to call at him, oh, we honor you, O king. And again and again they hit him in the head with a stick and they spit on him. They fell on their knees and they pretended to honor him. They brought the king to a place, the place of the skull. And they nailed him to the timber of a cross. Two rebels were nailed up on crosses beside him, one on his left and one on his right, like brothers. Everyone who watched hurled insults at him. And the darkness gathered. And with one final shout, the king died. And I heard a loud voice from the throne of heaven saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with humans. He will live with them and they will be His people. God Himself will be with them. And I looked and there was a great multitude and with them all the choirs of angels singing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. And as one, the great multitude cried out, Surely, surely this man is the Son of God. Amen.